Hello everyone. Today we're going to start talking about a new topic and this time we're not introducing a new component and rather talking about different kind of uh, signal that uh, uh, is very common in electrical uh, domain and that's uh, the sinusoidal uh, type of uh, signals or in other words sinusoidal voltages or uh, currents and generally speaking alternating voltages and currents and for the most part, so far, we've been talking about sources uh, of voltage and current that the, would uh, provide you with either a constant voltage or a constant current, uh, or uh, if we combine those constant voltage and constant currents with a switching uh, functionality where uh, the voltage, the constant voltage or current would be turned on and off at a certain uh, point in time which would give you a, a step function. Um, as much as those kind of situations are uh, uh, basically valuable to study, uh, there is this other class of uh, signals that uh, are uh, um, most, most likely a lot more useful uh, in, in electrical circuits and they're called generally uh, alternating signals, specifically sinusoidal signals. Uh, why would they uh, show up everywhere and why do we care about sinusoidal signals too much? Uh, that's a very valid question and we're going to slowly get to the point that we can answer that question. But one of the things that you want to maybe consider uh, is that the, the type of uh, signal that at least say in power electronics is generated by uh, generators that turn a different uh, form of energy into electrical energy uh, are very much uh, in the form of an alternating voltage or current that can be resembled uh, approximately by a sinusoidal signal. And therefore, once you have that signal generated, uh, you transfer the same signal to any point of use, and then at that point, any system that is connected to that generated signal is going to have to deal with that kind of signal. Now, whether or not it would have been better to uh, turn that alternating signal into a constant signal and then transfer it, uh, that's actually a, a good question and there has been uh, historical debates about that. Uh, today, we have both kind of uh, signals actually being transferred, both constant and uh, alternating depending on the uh, kind of application that is at hand. But for the most part, uh, electrical power generation and transfer depends on alternating voltages and currents, or in other words, sinusoidal voltages and currents. There are many other reasons why we do care about uh, these specific kind of uh, signals. Uh, and we're going to get into that as we progress. Uh, you're going to know more about that in the uh, continuation of this, these discussions when we start talking about systems and then uh, Fourier transforms, different kinds of signals. But at this point, uh, it, it's enough to know that a lot of times the kind of signal that you're going to have to apply to your circuitry ends up being a sinusoidal signal. And therefore, it's critical for all electrical engineers to know how to deal with that kind of signal and how to basically analyze a circuit where that kind of a signal is present. So before we get into the analysis part, and I have a really simple circuit here to then discuss, uh, let's look at sinusoidal signals in uh, a bit more uh, care, uh, carefully and make sure that we all know uh, what type of signal uh, we are talking about. I'm sure you've seen this, but it doesn't hurt if we just quickly go through a quick review of what we mean. So here, uh, this line, the uh, kind of pink line, if you can see the color here, it's, uh, it's a, a cosine uh, function of time. X-axis is the time axis and y-axis, this function is the value of the function, and the function is written in the form of a constant, which 
is most of the time called the amplitude. Uh, so this is the amplitude of the signal uh, for a reason that you're going to quickly see. Uh, and then cosine of omega uh, times time. And this whole thing is in parentheses. Now, omega uh, is uh, basically the uh, the frequency of this signal um, it's the angular frequency of the signal and the difference between the angular frequency and the frequency or the relationship between the two is something like this so omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency now uh, when we actually look at the value of this signal over time uh, again, this is what you're going to end up seeing. So the value starts at t equal to 0 uh, to be equal to uh, a. In other words, when you put t equal to 0 into, in this function, you get the value function to be a times cosine of 0. Cosine of a 0 is 1, therefore you're going to get a. And then this goes through a cycle of uh, passing or crossing 0, reaching to basically negative a and then coming back up and reaching to the same value a and then repeating uh, over time. Therefore, the maximum value for this function is a, the minimum value for this function is minus a, and there, there you go. That's why this a value is called the amplitude of this signal. Now, uh, when you follow this uh, pattern, it starts at A. At some point, it's going to cross 0 once, reaches the minimum value, and then goes back up, crosses 1, and reaches the same value again. And this whole thing is going to happen within one period of this signal. And that period can be calculated or uh, uh, is defined as 1 over the frequency. So when we talk about the frequency of sinusoidal or cosine signal in this case, when we say sinusoidal, it includes sinusoids and cosines. They're the same family of the signals, and we're going to quickly discuss how they relate to each other. So uh, let's say the frequency of a signal is 1 hertz. So what that means is that within one second, because when I do 1 over 1 hertz, t, the period, ends up being 1 second. So within 1 second, this value of the signal is going to go through the whole period of going from the maximum, uh, passing through 0, minimum, and then going back to maximum again. So, and the next second, the same thing is going to repeat. So every second, this signal is going to go through the whole um, cycle of starting from one point and going back to the exact same point. Now if you make the frequency higher, say 2 hertz, then t, the period, is going to be half uh, of a second. So the same thing is going to happen in a half a second and so on and so forth. So if you're dealing, for example, with uh, uh, elect like utility, electrical utility, the, the signal that comes out of uh, the uh, outlets in most homes, uh, 60 hertz in the United States, that means that the period of the signal is 1 over 60 seconds. So in 1 60th of a second, the signal goes through the whole uh, period, the whole uh, uh, basically uh, cycle that we discussed here. Okay, so now we know what frequency is. Uh, as, as a result, we know what the period of that function is. And what, what uh, else we know is that we know what the amplitude of this function is. Now, you can take this same signal and start uh, basically shifting it in, in the time domain, like moving it uh, forward or backward. In other words, where your t equals 0 is for the same kind of signal is arbitrary. So you can move it around. For example, if I take this exactly same signal and shift it uh, forward by about 
pi over 2, okay, then everything that we discussed is still true, and this is the, the signal that I'm talking about. So A cosine omega t minus pi is the same signal, just shifted pi over 2 forward. Now, if you put value t equal to 0 in, in this signal, you're going to get A cosine of minus pi over 2, and the cosine of minus pi over 2 is 0. So you're on this function now. So that's 0. Now, if you move on to a different time that this value omega t becomes pi over 2, then pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. So a cosine of 0 becomes a. So this right here is uh, basically t, t, the period over fourth. Okay, and so on and so forth. So by taking the same signal and shifting it, you can generate, replicate the same signal, only shift it in the time domain. Now, in this specific case that I wrote here, if you shift the cosine by pi over 2, the signal that you're getting is actually sine omega t. That's how these two uh, functions are related to each other. Okay, so one is uh, uh, equal to the other one, only shifted uh, for pi over 2. Now, if you shift it for an arbitrary amount, like if you say I have a, have a gt function that is equal to a cosine omega t minus a general uh, phi, an angle, this value is actually called the phase of this signal. And it could be any value between uh, 0 to 2 pi, 180 de uh, 360 degrees. So you can shift the signal, and by the, by the time that you go 360 degrees, you go back to exactly the same signal. So anything beyond that, uh, can be repeated as opposed to going above uh, 2 pi or 360 degrees. So the most general form of writing a sinusoidal uh, signal, therefore, is in this form. An amplitude uh, times cosine of uh, frequency, angular frequency, times time uh, minus an angle is the most general form of a sinusoidal signal that you can write. That's going to cover any sinusoid uh, with an arbitrary frequency, arbitrary amplitude, and an arbitrary phase in, in the time domain. So we're going to take this and use it as a general representation of the kind of signals that we can apply to our circuitry from now on. And if you notice, the signal really can be represented as long as I know three important parameters, I know what kind of a signal I'm dealing with. I need to know what the amplitude of the signal is, I need to know what the angular frequency or the frequency is, I need to know what the phase is. And at that point I need, I can replicate uh, this signal at any point of time that I require to replicate that. I don't need to have all the data points. Uh, these three constant or parameters are going to give me all the information there is about uh, that signal. Okay, so with that background, let's quickly look at this signal. This is a, uh, this is a circuit. This is a circuit that we have already uh, discussed uh, in the past. Um, the only difference here is that as opposed to a constant voltage source, uh, now we are actually using a cosine omega t as the input for this circuitry. So let's go through the analysis quickly. Uh, uh, as you already know, the way that we analyze circuits is to basically 
take all the nodes and we're going to do it for t equal to zero and uh, uh, beyond because assuming that there is no energy in the system before that there is no current or voltage here so we don't have to really analyze the circuit with that assumption so uh, i'm going to assume that's my ground or zero volt as soon as i do that this is my source so that this is basically plus minus so that voltage minus this voltage is a cosine omega t so the label for that could be a cosine omega t now i'm going to call that v1 and uh, there's only one current passing through this i can basically do kcl for the circuit uh, in my mind so there is only i the only current that is passing through all three components and then I can write the equations for components. I'm going to do that here, down here. So for the resistor, so equations for components, uh, I is equal to A cosine omega T minus V1 divided by R. Now to make sure that I remind myself that now everything is a function of time as we discussed before, Sorry, I'm going to call that IT. Go back here, do the same for my labels. So this is IT, function of time. IT, and this is V1T. So IT is A cosine omega T minus V1T over R. And then again for the inductor. Now for the inductor, sorry. The equation for the inductor was like this. The voltage across the inductor, which in this case is V1T minus zero, is equal to the inductance L di t dt. And with that, I'm ready to do the analysis for this circuit, uh, math basically. So I can calculate V1T from this equation and put it here. That's one way uh, round it, or I can take the, uh, so from this equation, I know that V1T is equal to RIT uh, cosine is equal to A cosine omega T minus R. I T and I put it there so that means that's equal to L D I T D T. Now I move things around. Um, this becomes L D I T D T plus R I T is equal to A cosine omega T. So this is the equation that I have to now solve. As you can see, again, it's a first order differential equation. The only difference is that as opposed to dealing with a constant value here, which was the case most for the most part in the past uh, uh, circuits that we have done, now we have a function that includes a sinusoidal signal in there. Now, I have the, uh, the general solution for a differential equation like that. So. Uh, if you recall, if uh, we de dealt with the differential equations before, at the time we were solving, generally speaking, dyt over d dyt dt plus yt over tau uh, is equal to a k constant. And then we had a solution, if you recall, and that was a different, if you, if you remember, it was an exponential equation. Now, if your, uh, the other side of the differential equation actually has a, a sinusoidal signal, this would be the general form of a solution that you're going to have. So notice here that this solution uh, actually has two components. One of the components is still an exponential component, and the other part of it is a sinusoidal function. And there's something specific about this sinusoidal function. This sinusoidal function actually has the same frequency as the frequency of the signal that was here, so the frequency doesn't change. So with that, what we know is that if you're dealing with uh, 
linear components. These are linear, whatever that we have discussed so far are linear components. Then as soon as you have a sinusoidal source in the system, all the voltages and currents in the circuit are going to be a, a result of solving a, a differential equation like that. And therefore, all the currents and voltages in the circuit are going to be uh, having the same uh, frequency as the source that exists in the, in the circuit. And the other thing that is noticeable here is that if I'm not really concerned about this component of the solution. In other words, if this, this switch has happened way back in time, and I really don't want to know, because see, with this component of the solution, as the time passes, and like obviously at t equal to infinity, this component is zero. So as the time passes, this component is going to become insignificant compared to this part. This is going to just keep going, alternating back and forth, and in, with its frequency. So this is not going to go anywhere. It just keeps on repeating. But this component of it is actually going to go away completely. And if I don't, I'm not concerned about the component of the signal or the solution that is going to go away over time, I can only pay attention to this part. And with that, I, uh, I can start seeing a pattern here. The pattern being, that the solution to this, first of all, is going to have the same frequency, it's going to have the same alternating format, so if it's a sinusoidal signal, it's going to be a sinusoidal current and voltage in the circuit, and it's going to have the same frequency. Now, the amplitude of that signal and the phase are going to be different than what we have in the circuit, depending on what the circuit is. They might be the same, they might be different, but the frequency is the same. So, in other words, if I can manage to somehow uh, calculate the amplitude of the signal and the phase of the signal, then I don't have to write a differential equation. I just know that any voltage and current that I have is going to have the same format, and I just need to know what the amplitude of that signal, sinusoidal signal that I have for the, any voltage or current in the circuit, and the phase for any voltage and current in the circuit is, and I would be done. So once I get to this point, obviously I can solve my differential equation, calculate IT using this equation, and get a solution for it. And we're going to start doing that next time. Uh, this was to just to show you that we're not doing anything different if the input is um, sinusoidal. We're still following the same routine. The only difference is that now we are solving a differential equation that has a, an alternating input. That said, we're going to actually move on uh, to, uh, to a point that we're going to simplify this process and get rid of a lot of differential equation math uh, relevant, uh, like uh, required for solving a differential equation and only find a way to calculate the amplitude and the phase for all the currents and voltages in the circuit, knowing that all the currents and voltages in the circuit are going to have the same sinusoidal um, nature, and they're going to have exactly the same frequency. So as soon as I know the phase and amplitude, I'm done basically with uh, figuring out what all the voltages and currents in the circuit are exactly, uh, because then I can write the steady state equation for any voltage and current in the circuit in this specific format. The format that has an amplitude, the frequency that is equal to the input to the circuit, and a phase. So my job would be in the next lecture to show you how we can calculate the amplitude and the phase for any voltage or current in the circuit without the need to basically solve the differential equation for the most part. Thank you very much for the attention uh, and I'll see you later.